fans of oligarchs, Irish whiskey, bear wrestling, and press conferences wandering into potentially catastrophic territory, welcome back to Naughty Boy Fight Picks. This is my picks and predictions video for UFC 229. Uh, feels crazy that it's almost here. Uh, unreal, almost. Um, we'll get to that a bit later though. Uh, thank you for all the um, subscriptions. We've had a lot lately. Um, we, as in me. Um, and yeah, good engagement on the videos. Enjoying that as always. Had some idiot whinging about my rants and me talking about things that aren't just fight picks. So yeah, you don't have to listen to it. So don't come here complaining because that shit ain't getting heard. I'm going to do what I do the way I like to do it. <coughs> Forgive me today. Fuck, sorry. I forgot to turn my um, shit off. I forgot to put it on flight mode. Forgive me today. I'm very run down. I've had a long work day and I'm sniffly and tired and probably not that sharp. But we will proceed anyhow and hopefully I get a decent video done. Always up and down, I feel like I'm making progress in terms of uh, how it's going and then I'll do one on a shitty day and I'll know it's not that good but I ain't re-recording because what does it matter? Um, quick shout out to my bro JJ, he sent me the yen euro dollar sign care package. Uh, check out their shit on yen euro dollar sign dot com, very lovely clothes. Um, I'm very pleased with these and I would recommend them to you. And there's a little plug. Um, UFC Sao Paulo, my third loss in a row, first time that's happened. It fucking sucks, but it was small, it was only like 4.9 units, so uh, nothing catastrophic, but man, I need a win bad. I'm like Hector Lombard, is that his name? He was on the 5 6 fight losing streak. I need one bad, but card, cool, great to see latest get a win, I had picked him, and I thought about playing him, and I didn't, but now I wish I had, obviously, because he got a good win, cool for him, Santos, great win for him, great fight too, uh, what else was cool, a few things, but I can't remember, because my memory's fucking shot, so, Let's quickly get into this 229 card. I'll run through. Quick disclaimer, as always, some fights I haven't looked into in great detail, and you will know which ones they are. Others I have. Um, I don't have time to look at every single fucking fight, so that's just how it is. Uh, opening up the card is Ryan LaFleur, Lafleur versus Tony Martin. Um, I've actually got a play on this fight, a uh, nice underdog play. Uh, so, Ryan LaFleur, 14 and 2, 6 and 2 in the UFC, uh, has not got a finish since joining the UFC in 2013, which we see pretty often, you know, guys come from regional scene where they get finishes, come to UFC, it's a different level. Um, good takedown, top control, but not, I wouldn't say he's real... Um, Lay and pray, but he's not super offen offensive on the ground. So uh, if you were describing his style or his ground game, it would definitely be more towards the control side than the offense side from what I have seen. Um, he got a lot of takedowns in his early UFC run, but he's only actually had two in his last five fights, uh, opting to stand often and yeah is good if you're playing Martin like I am. Um, I do suspect that he will try and get this fight to the ground maybe more frequently than he has recently because I think Martin's going to be a much better striker and he's probably going to feel like he's the bigger guy too so we shall see what transpires there. Um, he's got some nice kicks uh, likes to press opponents against the cage, but doesn't do much work there. I haven't looked at who's refereeing this fight. I don't know if that information is even available. I know they've announced Herb for the main event, 
but kind of praying it's Mark Goddard because if he does that, they will get separated, uh, perhaps unfairly, as Goddard tends to do. Um, yeah, Leflair seems like really competent all round, but there's not an area where he appears to be particularly uh, dangerous. As for Martin, he's 13 and 4, 8 wins by submission, moved up to 170 in his last fight and won that, and he looked really good and looked happy at 170, so I noticed a marked difference from the beginning of the fight when he came out, and I don't know, I was attributing that to the change in weight, it looked like he felt really good and um, came out and fought that way. But perhaps there's other factors in that too, probably. Probably a good training camp or whatever, but I think the weight uh, change is part of that. Um, he's 5-4 and four in the UFC, but uh, his losses are to better competition than the guys LaFleur has lost to. Uh, Martin's never had a KO, despite looking like a pretty good striker. Um, definitely faster and more dynamic than LaFleur. He's a BJJ black belt, which would explain the eight wins by submission. He has um, real nice speed and timing on his right hand. Leflair may get counted off his kicks, uh, being that he's southpaw. Uh, Martin's got pretty good hips. Don't think Leflair will either, if he gets it to the ground, I don't think he'll keep Martin there. Martin's got uh, nice sweeps and sub attempts and yeah, no, it's just a dangerous fight for Leflair because I think it's dangerous on the feet and if he goes to the ground, it's dangerous there also. Um, in his last loss, that was against um, Olivier Aubin Mercier and he was, he, I think he lost the first two rounds but in the third, he rallied and came back and had a really dominant third round. So, uh, there's a good thing to see in a guy you're betting on that he has fight in him and uh, can be losing a fight but still come back and you know try and get that win really like to see that uh, Martin is still pretty young he could potentially be turning a corner in his career with this weight change and whatnot um, and his last two camps have both been for Southpaws so this will be the third Southpaw he's fought in a row which I also like for him um, Martin is a heavy underdog in this fight and I don't really understand the reasoning. Perhaps it's the records or Leflair's style, but I don't know. I feel pretty confident in this and um, yeah, should Martin come through, that's going to be my night. I'm going to have a good night, I imagine. Uh, so yeah, my pick in that fight is Martin probably by decision. Maybe a sub. Our next fight of the night. Ray Maynard versus Nick Lentz. I had a look at this because I think Maynard is a pretty heavy underdog in this fight. And I think I fancy him to win. But not confident enough to make a play. So I had a wee look. And yeah, I think Maynard may be able to employ his game. And get the bitter of Nick Lentz, but yeah, didn't want to play it, um, yeah, but I think Maynard can use his wrestling and win this fight against Lentz, who doesn't have the greatest takedown defense, um, and got a couple subs, but not heaps. Um, next fight up, Scott Holtzman versus Alain Patrick. Uh, both guys with really good records. Holtzman 11 and 2, Patrick 15 and 1. Um, did I write some notes on this? Yeah, both these guys are big physical 55ers. Um, and Patrick just looks dangerous. Even on the feet, he's got that quite typical uh, jiu jitsu player striking where he wings wild hooks and throws crazy kicks. but. Looks kind of dangerous, um, but yeah, and he's big and strong and physical, and he can, yeah, he goes pretty hard for three rounds, so 
Um, man, this could be a real grueling fight, just given how fucking massive and strong both these guys are. But yeah, I think Patrick gets the win here. I think he's a reasonably heavy favorite, but that could be a fun fight. Um, Patrick's exciting. His fights are fun to watch. So we shall see. Next fight up, Lena Landsberg versus Jana Kunitskaya. Um, didn't really look into this at all, but Landsberg, pretty trash. So um, I'm just going to say Kunitskaya by... She's got a pretty decent KO percentage, but yeah, I don't know. Kunitskaya by decision. Next fight up, another one I didn't uh, pay too much attention to, Aspen Ladd versus Tanya Evinger. Um, Evinger, the grizzled vet. Um, Aspen Ladd, I guess somewhat of a prospect. Yeah, I'm picking Aspen Ladd in this fight by a decision. And yeah, another one I didn't really fucking look at because I don't care. Next fight up, Vincente Luque who I really like, um, facing Jalen Turner, who is a newcomer to the UFC. This kind of reminds me of um, last week, what's his name? The young guy who came in to fight Zalecki. Uh, yeah, I think this is just a fucking tough debut matchup for Jalen Turner. And I think Luque gets this by finish uh, may look at betting the prop on that Luke by finish next fight up super exciting one uh, number two ranked Sergio Pettis versus the number five ranked Juicy Air Formiga um, I have a play on Pettis for this fight uh, yeah so Sergio 17 and 3 5 and 1 in his last 6 and that sole loss is to the, the champ Cejudo who wrestle fucked him. Uh, Sergio is very young and looks to be improving quite rapidly, um, particularly in the wrestling defense area, which was his weakness. Um, and may still be. We will, I guess, we'll get. He'll get another good test in this fight. Although Formiga's takedown is not the greatest. Um, I think Joe B is a bit has a better takedown than Formiga and. Sergio was able to stuff the majority of Joe B's takedown, so looks good for him in this fight, I think. Um, uh, yeah, most of most of Pettis' wins by decision, but he has been looking, like in recent fights, looking, sitting down on his punches more, and he did rock uh, Benavidez a few times, so looks like he's improved his power by sitting down on those punches and wouldn't be surprised if he starts pulling out some finishes. Uh, Sergio, probably the best technical striker in the division. Big call, maybe? Nah, I think he's a better striker than Demetrius Cejudo. Yeah. Um, Cejudo obviously wanted no part of his striking. Uh, good leads and counters, particularly the right hand. He has a beautiful right hand. Uh, good get-up game and takedown defense exhibited in his last fight versus Benavidez, as I said. Um, he's got real good eyes in the pocket. He, You see a lot of guys, you know, as soon as they start exchanging in the pocket, they just, like, head down, swing wildly. But um, Sergio, if he gets in close, he's still looking for the shot, and he often picks it and hits his mark. Um, as for Formiga, he's 21-5, Ten wins by submission. He's never had a KO. Uh, he's got serviceable striking, but he would want this fight on the ground, I imagine. He has only lost to the very, very top guys. He's got good control if he does get on top. Sorry about those notifications. Um, and... Yeah. So I think... I think in this fight, Sergio is going to largely stop the takedowns. Um, and possibly, if he can stop the takedowns, he might get a finish on the feet in this fight. Um, 
yeah, just huge improvement. And even just between the Cejudo fight and then the Benavides fight, there looked to be dramatic improvements. Um, and I imagine he will be improved again. So I've got a three unit play on Sergio Pettis in this fight. Next fight up, um, Sean O'Malley versus Jose Quinone. Uh, I can't pronounce this. Quinones. Um, Sean O'Malley, 10 and 0. Jose, 8 and 2. Um, I think I got some notes on this. I got O'Malley included in a parlay. Or maybe two. So, yeah. Um, O'Malley, 10 0, two wins in the UFC and then one in the Contender Series. Uh, Quinone is 7 and 2. He's on a four fight win streak in the UFC. Not against the greatest of competition, though. Um, Jose's determined with the takedown, but he looks quite hittable. Um, against guys that aren't as good good at striking as Sean O'Malley. Uh, yeah, all his wins are over inexperienced guys with pretty suspect records. Uh, Ishihara got takedowns on him pretty easy and dropped him a few times. Uh, O'Malley's going to have a pretty sizable height and reach advantage. And just... So before I went back into tape on this, obviously I've watched O'Malley, I know who he is. And, but I wasn't sure about who he was, you know. I was kind of like, is he all hype? But I went and watched, went back and watched his UFC fights. And I think he, this kid's a legit talent, man. His striking is fucking good. His timing and speed and accuracy is really, really high level, I thought. And just the variety of strikes he throws. So you never know what he's going to hit you with. Um... And the, the start switching is really nice as well. So he's a fucking problem on the feet, man. And I don't think Jose's gonna uh, gonna handle it. I think if you saw, you know, Ishihara hurting Jose on the feet and giving him problems, I think O'Malley's a way better striker than Ishihara. Obviously, Ishihara's got some power, but yeah, I think O'Malley's much better. He's also got good BJ, BJJ if the fight does hit the ground. Um, I'm thinking O'Malley will get a finish here, perhaps the KO, TKO, or perhaps he'll drop him and jump on a sub, but yeah, O'Malley by a finish. Um, next fight up, Michelle Waterson versus Felice Herrig. Um, another one I considered betting, I was thinking of making a play on Herrig, but I don't know, I went and watched the, the fight with, um, what's her name? Uh, Carolina and yeah I just didn't see enough to make me confident in Herrig like she's tough and physical but her striking is ugly man um I imagine she will be able to muscle Waterson because obviously against Carolina Carolina is super tough and strong in the clinch as well but yeah I think she can uh out muscle Waterson and probably grapple out a uh, Decision victory here, but yeah, I'm not playing it. Don't don't trust Felice, but yeah, Felice by decision. Next fight up: Derek Lewis versus Alexander Volkov. Um, yeah, I've got I got Volkov in a parlay. Derek Lewis, whilst always dangerous, um. I don't know, I just feel like he's had poor performances lately and, uh, you know, the back issue keeps coming up in the Hunt fight, it was an issue in the um, in Garnu fight, it was an issue and, man, I, I know he said he's having some new treatment and stuff, but I don't know, backs are pretty, you know, once you fuck your back, everyone says once you fuck your back, it's fucked. So... I oh, know I can't really trust Lewis to come out and perform here. As for Volkov, big height advantage, not a big reach advantage, but I am hoping he will be able to just keep the range and pick off Lewis for 
a few rounds before going in for the kill. We do know Lewis obviously stays dangerous. He's got a lot of finishes late into fights, but yeah, I'm just thinking Volkov gets a man and fuck, like he had a war with Vadum. That was a fucking tough fight, man. And I thought Volkov really proved himself in that fight. Like Vadum ain't no joke. He's such a difficult guy to fight for anyone. Um, just wily, his striking is tricky, and then obviously his jiu-jitsu is nuts. And Volkov fought a real good fight against him, uh, took some licks, hung in there, and eventually got the finish. And yeah, I'm hoping, I'm hoping he puts the activity on Lewis and makes him work. I think that's a key. Get Lewis to work. But not many people do because they're afraid of that power, you know, and he's always lining it up, hoping to counter. So, interested in this fight. It could be fun if Volkov goes after him. Um, but yeah, I'm picking Volkov here. Maybe by decision. It's just three rounds. Yeah, Volkov by decision, I think, because he'll play the long game. Next fight up, we have Ovin St. Prue versus Dominic Grass. Um, <coughs> St. Prue, 22 and 11. Grass, 9 and 0. Um, I faded Grass in his last fight. Who the fuck was that against? Was it Jared Cannonier or someone? Let me just look that up quickly. Um, yeah. And I did it trepidatiously because I watched tape on Reyes and I was like, fuck, this guy is dangerous. But, yeah, and quickly wish I didn't when I saw him perform because he is fucking dangerous. And, yeah, so Cannonier was that last fight. He's on a three-fight streak in the UFC. Um, St. Pru, he's 4-1 and one in his last five with just the loss to Latifi. Um was fuck OSP is hard to bet against too because I've got Reyes in a parlay um OSP is dangerous for reasons everyone is familiar with he gets crazy submissions he's got crazy strength um and he can just end those kicks as well super dangerous but yeah I don't know I feel like Reyes might be a new breed in this division I think he comes out and finishes OSP in either the first or second with one of those kicks. I think OSP's there for that, and Reyes is fucking fast and a heavy hitter. So, yeah, Reyes by finish. And, yeah. And then co-main event. Pretty fucking exciting to have Tony Ferguson back. He is fighting Anthony Pettis, who... A lot of people were saying after his last fight, you know, well, there was murmurings of, ah, oh, is Anthony Pettis back? But, I mean, he was fighting Michael Chiesa, who is not elite, you know. Tony Ferguson's fucking elite. I do have concerns, because I got Ferguson in some parlays. I got concerns about Ferguson's knee and what he looks like coming back. But, yeah, if we, if he's anything... Close to the Ferguson we're familiar with. Pettis gets blown out in this fight for sure. Uh, just a three-rounder, which is, I prefer, when betting Ferguson for it to be a five-round fight because he obviously improves as the fight goes on. He can be a bit of a slow starter. So I think Pettis, you know, he's coming off that win, and I think a lot of his slump, like that obviously hurt his confidence and... He was not fighting with confidence, so he may come out here and have some early success, which a lot of people do against Ferguson. But, yeah, Ferguson turns that tide, and once he does that, I think it's just going to be a blowout. So Ferguson can't pick a fucking method of victory for Ferguson, because fuck knows what it will be. Um, but yeah, I think Ferguson finishes him, maybe in the third. But, yeah, really excited to see what Ferguson looks like and to see what he says about McNuggets or Habib because he's obviously got... Um, uh, he's been in verbal uh, sparring 
matches with the two of them in the main event and he will want that shot so he might do something fucking crazy you know um and it's a real good position for him to make a claim for the next shot should he beat the shit out of Anthony Pettis so there that motivations there for him as well so I think we see a really really good performance out of Tony Ferguson here and that's a good fucking match up for him too because Pettis has the the name value and he's former champion and but he's also a guy I think Ferguson Ferguson can fucking breeze through and I think that's what happens uh next fight the champion Habib Nurmagomedov versus the challenger although he has two belts uh Conor McGregor um Habib, everyone knows, 26-0. McGregor, 21-3. and three. Um, Yeah, fuck, I don't, I don't fucking know about this fight. There's no way I'm betting it. Every, I think the only, like, in the recent years, you know, since Conor's been big. Um, so where we say, like, since the Mendez fight, maybe? every fight of his I've picked wrong so apart from the um, Mayweather fight of course because that was fucking easy to pick but I always doubt Conor McGregor and then he always makes me look foolish and then the one time I thought he was going to win was the first Diaz fight and then he fucking lost so I don't call fucking Conor McGregor fights but especially this one because I don't know man how do you pick against uh, Habib? But then also, how do you pick against McGregor? These are two guys I never want to fucking bet against. So I just want to sit back and enjoy it. Um, man, people have gone in and given their thoughts on this fight over and over and over. Um, most people seem to be seeing it one way or the other, or they highlight the the possibility of it going either way and everyone can say you know Habib gets it to the ground it's over or they say McGregor's gonna land the left early on and it's gonna be over for Habib uh, I really hope it goes past the round I would like to see them both have some success and it turn into a scrap uh, yeah, and perhaps it will, you know, like the way McGregor's blown guys out. Um, maybe Habib's that guy that can't be blown out. I mean, like Diaz was the same as well, but yeah, I guess I think Habib, like, you know, Habib's hittable. That's the knock on him. And I think we're going to see, like, what is his chin made of because he's probably going to eat something big and we will see whether he can survive it. Uh, as for who I want to win, uh, definitely Habib. I would like to see him bounce Connor's head through the fucking proper 12 logo on the mat. Um, but I don't know, like, fuck, I, I can't stand Connor McGregor, the personality and all that. But fuck, it's great to watch him fight and he's exciting and fucking talented. He's undeniable, like, what he does in the octagon, so... Real exciting that he's back and we get to watch him fight again. And in a fight that people have been waiting for for ages. Fucking touch wood that this fight takes place. It will be... Man, I didn't think it would be more possible to be gutted about a fight. A cancelled fight. More gutted than the um, Habib and Tony fight. And then I was proved wrong when the uh, Holloway Ortega fight was pulled. So, but yeah, this one would just take the cake. So I don't want to harp on about it too bad because I feel like I'll fucking jinx it. But uh, forced to make a pick, like I haven't even decided because my mind changes all the time. I'm, I'm going to go on some esoteric bullshit because I can't pick it on like what I know of these fighters and what I've seen from them. So at the press conference... I thought, man, McGregor was buzzy. Maybe it was just the fact there was no crowd, but yeah, he seemed like a raving lunatic. And I know it is, he's promoting, right? He's very smart. 
he's promoting, but I don't know. I do wonder about the money and the fame and, you know, are people that seem to be close to him and stuff, you know, all at a rate that he is a professional and he's a competitor and I think he has proved that. So, man, I think he'll be doing everything he can to win this fight. Super um, interesting thing about this fight, I think, will be who... Which fighter changes the other fighter, if you know what I mean? So, you know, you see lots of guys against Habib. I think a real good example was R. Quinta, how he, like, just lowered his stance ridiculously to um, try and stuff takedowns. I don't think McGregor will... He's too fucking large on himself to alter his game uh, based off his opponent's uh, threats. And... Mm. which is good for him I think in this fight I mean it could prove to be his downfall but fuck I don't think you want to go in there and try and be someone you're not and then Habib he obvious, obviously has to you know get close to McGregor which is fucking dangerous because McGregor is a counter puncher um yeah, I don't know. So fucking interesting. And I can't wait till they shut the octagon on these two. And they go to war. But yeah. Did I make a pick? Habib. I'm picking Habib. But I have no faith in that pick whatsoever. I can't call this fight at all. Um, sorry if you're disappointed and you wanted me to make a prediction. But... Fuck, lots of people have been that far. I guess it's fun to bet, like, such a big fight, but I don't want to put nothing on this. Or I've included doesn't go the distance in some parlays, so, you know, why not? That seems like a pretty safe bet to me. Um, yeah, so that's all the picks. Very excited for the for the fight card. Should be fun. Um, don't need to give a fight to watch because we know but I think my fighter to watch is oh is it Tony or is it Sergio fuck probably given the nature of the car being that it's Tony's division at the top probably Tony but I am real keen to see what Sergio Pettis looks like uh very keen um news in the week John Jones gets a reduced sentence for being a fucking snitch and his management all over MMA media on the offensive saying shit like they got a reduced sentence because of arbitration when everyone knows that it's because he's flipped on someone or some people uh, I don't know man what a sack of shit like I know perhaps someone's taking the fall for him and not getting remunerated for it in which case yeah you know he is the fucking king. Um, but I don't know, he just becomes more unlikable all the time. But having said that, excited to see him fight again. And everyone's saying it won't be 2.30, but I still have a feeling it will be. And I'm just going to announce it when they announce it. But it's hard to say who it would be against as well. So we shall see. But exciting that Jones is back, but fuck the nonsense his uh, management is spouting because they're full of shit um, and I touched on it a little bit but the press conference last week I fucking hated it I saw lots of people enjoyed it but man I don't know I found it fucking painful and I usually I think I feel like previously nah actually the Mayweather uh, McGregor tour pissed me off as well it was just painful and juvenile and um like the cackling he does uh irritates the fuck out of me and just yeah I don't know like you know people saying it's act and stuff but I think that's just his personality turn up to a hundred so he's obviously amplifying it you know the way like a pro wrestler does um a, a real good rapper, Mr. Motherfucking Esquire, if you're familiar with him. I read an interview with him, and he's like, I feel like rappers, you know, we're like uh, WWE guys, and we, for the sake of the art or our art, we just turn our personality up to 100. And I feel like that's McGregor. So whilst 
turned up and blown out of proportion. I think that shit is who he is. Like, you ever seen footage of him? Uh, kind of, you know, candid footage where he's just hanging out with people around him. And he's that guy that, like, says a joke, which ain't funny. And then he kind of, like, laughs and looks at you. And you've got to laugh. That's who he is. That fucking asshole. Um, and that's just, like, real... Real, um parallel to the shit that comes out in the press conference you know he's so fucking entertained by himself but he's mm, I don't know I find him tiresome and juvenile but you know he's out on a fight and he'll pray work so um good on him he's gonna get paid so yeah that's about it um they did announce some more fights for UFC Adelaide today which I'll be attending so Shogun Hua is matched up with Tyson Pedro, which I think is a horrible fight for Shogun. But in a selfish way, I'm kind of stoked that I get to see a legend in the flesh. Um, but yeah, I will want Tyson to win that fight, being that he's from this part of the world. And Mark Hunt, in what could be his last fight, versus uh, Justin Willis, where I will be predicting Mark Hunt to win that fight for sure. So be great to see to be at Mark Hunt's last fight Kai Kata France's debut uh, see Shogun obviously Bam Bam Tuivasa um, in the main event versus Junior Dos Santos I think that'll be a fun fight so yeah fuck we're getting a good card down here so I'm fucking excited to go to that um, but yeah that's about it please uh, like and subscribe uh, send me a message if we get a bunch of comments and shit then I may do another video next week because I'll have nothing to do one on because I ain't fucking covering Bellator or any bullshit like that. So if there's some shit to cover, and there may well be, who fucking knows what's going to happen next week during fight week. But yeah, I may do another video just talking some shit. So we'll see what happens. But yeah, so get at me with any questions, anything you might like to discuss. Oh, one thing I wanted to discuss is what if... So say it's a blowout to Habib, just hypothetically. Say it's a blowout to Habib, and then Conor wants a rematch. Do you think he gets it? Like, does he have enough push, or will Habib be able to turn that fight down? Because, or will he want to? Because it will obviously still be the biggest payday, and if he's blown the dude out, he may want to take it. So, in theory, <laughs> like... If you believe that theory, which I'm unsure of, I'm interested to see what happens though, because McGregor just has so much sway. Um, but if Habib keeps beating them, they could just keep fighting forever. I know that's stupid and that won't happen, but interested to hear people's thoughts on what they think will happen given, you know, a Habib blowout or a McGregor blowout. I think if McGregor blows him out then. Habib definitely don't get a rematch because he ain't got enough push, but we shall see. Anyway, very excited about the fights. Um, I didn't go into my picks and plays, but I got, you can look at them. I've got the link to my bet MMA profile and the thing, but I got four units on Tony Martin, who's paying like $2.75. And then I got three units on Sergio Pettis, I think, who's paying like $1.70. Then I've got a bunch of parlays who are including Ferguson, uh, Sergio, Tony Martin, um, who else we got in there? Vincente, Luque, um, McGregor, Habib does not go to decision, and yeah, but have a look and scope it out, and if it's of any assistance to you, then I'm glad, and I'm definitely getting money this, this fucking event, I, man, I hope so. Alright, good luck to you though, and, um, catch you up soon.